Hello there, my name is Ismail, and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be looking at how to make a super hero landing. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. i uh, open up a new Blender project and uh, you can delete the default cube and add uh, another cube. And then uh, scale it to the size of uh, the ground how you want to use. And uh, just going to create a thin layer here, something like that. Uh, let me first see how big this is this measure tool so 10 meters that's a bit too big let me try around two meters and uh, because the scale of the object affects uh, the simulation so uh, let's go with something like this and uh, make sure you have the uh, fracture cell uh, add-on enabled you just go under your preferences and uh, add and enable that add-on from there. And now we want to subdivide this, sorry, uh, fracture this into different pieces. Uh, first we have to draw kind of uh, a pattern of our fracture. So I want the character or superhero uh, to land in this spot here. So I'll just create this pattern like this so that uh, the fracturing follows that kind of pattern something like that and uh, now we can go to object uh, but before we do that let's set up a few basic materials uh, because we want uh, the fracture to set up uh, two materials let me first select something like this this piece here you want to set a material for this uh, thickness here and uh, the top layer there so we want that to be done by the fracture by the fracture material so let's go into Select the object and go under materials. I set up uh, two materials. I'll call this uh, top layer. And uh, let me give it a brownish, dark brownish color. And another layer, another material, call this middle. Just give it, a, let me just give it a blue. And let me give this a red, just so they can, they are easily visible here in our viewport and then I can go on an object quick effects cell fracture I make sure the point source is set to annotation uh, to follow the patterns we have grown here uh, using the annotation uh, tool and then uh, for the materials you want to go to you want to go under mesh data and then uh, give the material an index of one this will set uh, this the thickness to have uh, this middle uh, material we have just created if you want, you can uh, smooth uh, the interior. Um, and uh, another thing we want to do is uh, organize this into collection. So I'll call this, I'll create another layer here. I want these fractures to be added into uh, a collection called uh, layer one. We're going to have two fracture layers. Let me show what I mean here. If I hide uh, this, you can see we have two fracture layers uh, one is the top layer like the asphalt and then the second one is uh, the ground layer uh, this kind of allows some more realistic movement uh, kind of when when the character hits the ground it pushes this uh, ground layer to push uh, the top layer just a bit to kind of have more realistic movement uh, so let's how that uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I have uh, this here in its own layer so that it doesn't interfere with the fracture so I'll move this in uh, uh, a collections layer called extras now if I want to select just the fractures let me first turn off uh, the extras select shift G collection and you can see now we have that uh, let's do the same for the second uh, ground layer again let's just select this move it down a bit maybe scale it up a bit uh, so that uh, the ground layer is a bit uh, uh, thick let's extend it above like that uh, we can use the same pattern we drew here or let I think the pattern works better if uh, the layer is close uh, to to the annotation drawings so we can go an object again 
quick effects. I want this to have a different material, so I'll just uh, duplicate this material, call this ground top layer, and then ground middle layer. And so again, you can go under to fracture with uh, quick effects. So fracture, uh, the, set the same set settings can apply except we want this to be uh, the uh, the fractures here. The fracture has to be placed in layer two. So hit OK. You can see uh, these have been placed into layer two. I don't want this to be in extras there. I just want it to be yeah, something like that. And layer one should also be there, like so. And again, we can hide uh, these extras. Uh, we need to move because you can see our uh, layer two is interfering, is intersecting with, air, with, layer, with layer one. So I will have to move it down just a bit so that it's not intersecting. Now uh, we don't need this annotation uh, layer anymore, so I can go in and uh, remove that. Yeah. So we have two layers, and uh, if we look at the materials and see this is what we have. So if I want to change this ground layer to have a different color, I can just do that quite easily. Now let's start uh, doing some physics. So if we add, let's say, a Susan monkey head, like here, and uh, go under physics, give it a rigid body system, active, you can see, why is it snapping? just going through this so I'll select this layer object rigid body and active it will also just fall down uh, so to avoid that uh, we can go in and turn on under I think under dynamic turn on deactivate and under deactivate uh, turn on start deactivated uh, this means that uh, uh, these elements will start will be stationary until something collides with them and uh, right now we only have one object set to start deactivated so one so we want to copy all this this setting to all the other fractures so i'll just right click right click copy to selected right click copy to selected make sure deactivate and uh, start deactivate are all set for for all the individual fractures you have so now if you play back can see they only start falling down after this collides with them. Uh, so we also need to do the same for this layer. Make sure it's a rigid body. So add active and then deactivate and start deactivate. Copy to selected. Copy. Copy to selected. You can see. They will only start falling, or st yeah, start falling after they collide with this object. But I, I still don't want them to go to to just fall down. Uh, that's why I'm going to bring in this uh, cube here that we created from. They were all created from. Let me expand it a bit, and uh, maybe let me give it a different material so so that it's easier for us to see. Let me try yellow. I will remove this front side. Then I want it to be at the ground level of our surface. Now I can extrude this like this and uh, give this a rigid body type, a uh, passive, and I make sure that. Uh, the shape is the collision shape is set to mesh if you play back you can see now uh, but uh, some of the pieces are intersecting uh, with with the ground so i'm just going to select this edge loop here and uh, push it out just a bit so alt s should do fine or just scale in the x and y plane and uh, also we can extend this just a bit down like 
that. With this, maybe also extend this a bit further outside. I think that's a bit better. Now we just need to give this a bigger force so I can keyframe this start from there and try going through this uh, make sure you have uh, animated turned on let's see now it's a bit fast yeah, something like that but I also don't want it to go through because you can see it starts creating a few issues down here. So what I'm going to do is turn off animated at around this frame. Uh, that will retain uh, the initial velocity, but uh, it will stop it from going through uh, the entire mesh. So let me keyframe this. And then at frame 15, I can turn off uh, the animation. Now it means it just bounce off. Uh, right now the force is not large enough uh, to kind of push those uh, part of those fractures up like you see here. So what I'm going to do is uh, increase first increase the mass to about 10 and see it's not it's still not too not enough. So what I'm going to do let me scale this keyframes down a bit so that we have we give this a very high velocity. Now you can see but uh, I think the mass, the mass is a bit still low. Let's try 100. Maybe increase the speed just a bit. Okay. Let's try 200. And you can see, maybe increase again. Sure, what's going? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. what's going on here but uh, okay now yeah, I think that was a bug but uh, so let's increase maybe the let's increase the mass again yeah, I think that's good enough but uh, if you wanted to, to explode kind of and uh, the particles go up even further. You just have to increase the mass and uh, everything. But uh, let's first work with this and see. Uh, so, so I think we can now bring in uh, our character. So I got this character from Maximo. Uh, if, let me see. Just not to make sure that I don't show anything that I shouldn't. So I got this character from Maximo. Was it Maxima? Maximo? Free character. Free. Mixamo, not Maximo. So it's from Mixamo. So you just download it from there. Uh, it's an Adobe website, uh, but you just need to have an Adobe. Uh, account a free account and i should be able to download uh the character with the animation so what i did let me just show you how i imported this uh from the website you have an option to export uh the character and its animation as an fbx uh, object so you just go on a file import fbx and uh, i have that on in my downloads i think 
here. Then you import it. it takes a few seconds, and uh, now if we play back, you can see it's a bit slow uh, because uh, the character has a lot of vertices. Not too much, uh, but uh, because I'm recording, yeah, it's kind of slowing down my computer. So what I did is uh, I added a decimate modifier and reduce the polygon count here to something more manageable. And uh, since I'm not going for a realistic uh, render, I don't mind uh, the low polygon count. And I can see now we just have to get the timing correct. So I can move uh, this character. So to move the character, the entire character, you have to select uh, the, uh, the amateur whole bones and move them into position. You can also scale them, but make sure when you're scaling, you don't have any keyframes stand on. Hopefully I didn't add any. Okay, so I think we have a few keyframes here. So let me delete that and delete that. Then push him back, push her back like that. Now we just need to get uh, the timing for these. So I don't want any keyframes for this. We just need the timing right to have the, to, uh, to get the correct timing here. So for that, uh, let me find the where is that? Uh, okay, this here. And my character lands at around here. So I can select all these keyframes and push them forward just a bit. And let's see now. Okay. This timing is still a bit off. So I think I need to bring this to around there. Yeah, I think that's better. Uh, let me reduce my timeline to about 70 frames and uh, you can see now uh, what you can do is uh, you can have a ground that's that is slightly above that is slightly above uh, the fractures like that and you give it a texture similar uh, to to your fractures and uh, when this when the character uh, hits the ground it will just kind of make those fractures I think yeah something like that so I also in this original version, what I did, I also added a particle system to add a few more particles. And I can see the process of adding those extra particles uh, on my second channel, Blender Money. Uh, just a time lapse of the entire process of doing this scene here from start to finish. Uh, this story has gone on uh, to at least more than 20 minutes and I don't want it to be that long. So yeah, anyway, that's the same process. And I've done this particle system quite a few times. so. Yeah, if you want to watch the entire process of how I did this and uh, set up the materials, you can just go watch that. Thanks for watching. I'll be leaving a link in the description.